of this. Do you know India is facing significant environmental challenges associated with the waste generation, inadequate waste collection, transport treatment and disposal facilities. Current system follows in India cannot cope with the volume of waste generated by an increasingly urban population and this impacts the environment and public health. The challenges and barriers are significant but so are the opportunities. Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel Cobbiz. My name is Shruti Garg and today we will be giving an overview of how to conduct an environmental impact assessment for a common municipal solid waste management facility. So first let me introduce you to the concept of EIA. EIA for Common Municipal Solid Waste Management Facility is a process of identifying, predicting, evaluating and mitigating the social, biophysical and other relevant impacts of the developmental proposal prior to a major decision being taken and a commitment made. EIA for Common Municipal Solid Waste Management Facility integrates the environmental concern of various activity into the process of decision making. Now let's understand the categorization of solid waste management facilities as per EIA notification 2006. It is covered under category B of item 7i that is common municipal solid waste management facility of the schedule to the EIA notification 2006 and its amendments and require appraisal at state level. In case of general conditions, the project will be treated as category A. But the important question is, what comes under the purview of EC? So now, let's check the applicability of EC for such waste management facility. As per EIA notification 2006 and its subsequent OM and circular dated 7 November 2017, expert group revisited the process of obtaining prior EC regarding applicability of EC for non-applicability of EC. Let's see, EC is applicable in proposing a landfill site or municipal solid waste disposal site because it is a contentious issue and there is a tendency to locate them far from the habitation but near forest, river, ponds, wetlands and low-lying areas that are critical from environmental point of view. It may not be appropriate to exempt this activity from the requirement of prior AC. In continuation of the non-applicability, EC is not applicable to door-to-door -door collection, segregation, composting, refuse derived fuel that is RDF etc. Now what are the main objectives of conducting an EIA? Let's understand. The major purpose of conducting an EIA is to prepare an environmental statement of the assessment of the likely environmental impacts of the proposed integrated municipal solid waste management facility. Second, the management of solid waste is of growing concern to the general public at large local authorities and business communities in different cities and towns across India. In order to comply with the MSW rules 2016, proper collection, segregation, recycling and disposal are much needed. Third, is conducting an EIA for common municipal solid waste management facility to develop mitigation measures so as to minimize the pollution, environmental disturbance and nuisance during the operation period of the proposed project. Now, what should we do in case of the applicability of EC on the project? So first one should understand what clearance and NOCs are required for conducting an EIA for common municipal solid waste management facility. Forest clearance if applicable, wildlife clearance or NBWL if applicable, CRZ clearance if applicable, Central Groundwater Authority CGW NOC, forest certificate, site specific conservation plan and wildlife management plan in case of presence of Schedule 1 species in the study area, which is approved by the Chief Wildlife Warden. Now, coming to the applicable laws and legislations for conducting an EIA, includes as Municipal Solid Waste Rules 2016, Plastic Waste Management Rules 2016, which is amended in 2022, the Hazardous Waste Rules 1989, Hazardous Waste Management Handling and Transboundary Movements Rules 2008, Environmental Protection Act 1986, EIA Notification 2006, Air Act 1981, Water Act 1974, Forest Conservation Act 1988 and the last one Wildlife Conservation Act 1972. Now, to carry out an EIA, one must understand the stages involved in an EIA process 
so the first stage is screening this stage aware the project proponent of their obligation before deciding on the budget project design and execution plan it also decide if an eia is required or not next stage is scoping this stage identifies the environmental impacts of the project and defines the scope of the study in eia report next term of reference which is tor after the scoping stage the project proponent or consultant applies at the state level for a grant of tor letter which consists of the scope of the project and the timeline carrying out an eia next stage is the submission of draft environmental impact assessment report it includes all the baseline details of the project its impacts and the development of mitigation measures accordingly next is public consultation this stage plays a major role in the entire stage of the eia process public hearing conducts at the project site and the proposal is presented in front of the public for their opinion and views on the existing or proposed project next is the submission of final eia after the incorporation of public hearing minutes issued by the pollution control board and submitted to central or state level for review and the last stage is appraisal which decides whether the environmental impact assessment is satisfactory or not finally on the basis of these stages the concerned authority grant the ec or reject it accordingly for a better understanding of drafting an eia report we should know the generic structure of eia as per the notification so there are 12 chapters or section involved in an eia reporting which is showing on your screen with its content for your ease now let's check out what are the annexure required for the compilation of an eia report for the common municipal solid waste management facility these includes first tall letter site layout and landfill design plan land documents with khasra map baseline monitoring data public hearing proceedings detailed project report and lastly the dcf certificate but how many associate team of experts are involved in the compilation of an ei report let's see nabit consultant includes eia coordinator team members functional area experts functional area associates etc NABL approve lab civil engineer air and noise quality specialist occupational health specialist geologist or geohydrogeologist ecologist transportation specialist safety and health specialist and last one sociologist this was all the vital information that one might need as a reference for eia in the case of municipal solid waste management facility i am sure this video was informative to you So if you are looking for the assistance of certified environmental consultant that can help you to prepare a quality EIA report and to obtain environmental clearance you can connect with our expert at Cobbiz with the details below we help our clients with all environmental compliance related to their projects please like and share if you found this information useful you can also subscribe to our channel and visit our website cobbiz.io thank you for watching